You may have heard the old joke that Jewish history can be summed up in three sentences. They tried to kill us, we won, let's eat. Actually, I have a number of Jewish friends who laughingly tell me that they believe their whole culture is obsessed with food. But if you read the Bible, I think you'll find that it's God himself that's obsessed with food. After all, all of those festival meals were his idea. But in ancient Israel, the sitting down together for a meal had much more significance than it actually has today. It was a time of reconciliation, a time of restoration, a time of sealing a covenant between those that were at one point enemies who have now come together with no desire to continue as enemies, but committing to move together in peace and in oneness and sealing that new covenant with a meal. And you find it all over in the scriptures. In the Tanakh, or what we call the Old Testament, there are stories like the story of Laban and Jacob. They got together and made an agreement that neither one would ever again harm the other. And how did they seal it? They had a meal. And in Exodus, God has given the Torah to the Jewish people. And he calls Moses and Aaron and the 70 elders of Israel to the top of the mountain where they see God. And what do they do? They eat and drink, scripture says. There are many such examples in the Bible. And in the writings of the apostles or what we call the New Testament as well. For instance, Jesus has just been crucified, buried, raised from the dead, and he tells his disciples to meet him in the Galilee, his disciples and Peter. And so they travel to the Galilee, and when they get there, what do they find? They find Jesus preparing a meal for these disciples who had turned their backs on him, and for Peter in particular, who had denied him three times. It was a meal of reconciliation. As you read on in the writings of the apostles, you find it again in the book of Revelation chapter three, where Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and what? I will come in and eat with him. Many, many, many examples of the importance of this meal of reconciliation and restoration. But I think there's one place that often gets ignored, and that's in Psalm 23, verse five, where it says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. I've asked a number of Christians what that means to them, and they usually say something like, well, it means that I get to sit down and have this wonderful meal that God prepared for me, and all of my enemies around can just look on and they can't partake. I'm not sure that that's exactly what's meant there. Yes, God has prepared this meal for me and for him, and we will share it together. But perhaps what God is saying is that it's his desire that my enemies would join in that meal as well, that my enemies would no longer be enemies, but they would enter into a covenant of peace, that they would come to the table with me and with the Lord. I think maybe that's what's being said in Psalm 23. And so as I think about it, I'd like to encourage myself and encourage you as well, that perhaps our behavior the way we conduct ourselves, the way we represent the Lord, will influence how many of those enemies are actually willing to come to the table and sit down. Mm -hmm.